Hi, I'm Amy Bilodeau, Volunteer Coordinator of the Wellness Center at Jeffrey Hale. This video was filmed at our 2019 training session for volunteers who assist seniors and who want to know how to connect with those who have declining mental function. Our guest speaker is Hugo Lanou from the Alzheimer's Society of Quebec. Enjoy. People living with uh, uh, diseases, neuro neurological diseases, diseases and also their family and we also have a day center uh, for people uh, living with uh, Alzheimer's so basically today we're going to talk about Alzheimer's which is the mo most common form of uh, dementias <laughs> or neurological diseases which is the same thing so who here has a brain <laughs> yeah, we hope. we hope. Okay. Now you all know that the brain uh, is composed by uh, brain cells. So, and I heard that you are a neuroscientist. Good. So, if I'm wrong, don't hesitate to stop me and say, "Hey, you're wrong." So, how how many brain cells do we have? in our brain a number like that <laughs> three billion one big brain cell just one okay <clears throat> you don't hear me I don't know why I can't so you'll have to follow me <laughs> Three billion, that's much more than that. Be any, uh, between 65 and 100 billion of uh, brain cells we have in our brain. So the aging of the brain, it's like the rest of the organs that we have in our body. It ages, uh, starting from about 30 years old. We have more gray hair. We uh, move a uh, little uh, with difficulty, so the brain, well, it's the same. What is not normal is destructions, the, the destruction of those brain cells, which we call those diseases, we used to call them dementias, but nowadays we talk about uh, major neurocognitive disorders. That's what we call them. And there's uh, um, different kind of diseases. The most common form, which everybody knows, is Alzheimer's, which Dr. Alzheimer's discovered in 1906. <clears throat> but there's other types of diseases that are linked or family linked to Alzheimer's because they are all diseases that destroy um, progressively and there's no way to cure those diseases uh, so these are the most common forms that we know of uh, vascular diseases related which is almost like Alzheimer's but people uh, have uh, more speech uh, difficulty and humor difficulty uh, and uh, the evolution is like a little stairway, you know. Uh, they are frontotemporal diseases. First symptoms are whether language or whether behavior. So they are all the same diseases which affects all the brain, you know, but they don't begin in the same place in the brain so they don't begin with the same symptoms but today we're going to talk about Alzheimer's which is the most common form which is the most uh, the most uh, people are uh, uh, you know no the most common form family yeah that's it and there's also Louis body diseases which yeah, this is a kind of Parkinson-like related disease. So people have uh, the first symptoms, they, uh, they uh, will have rigidity in their movement, movements, 
Uh, they will have also hallucinations, which is rare in uh, the Alzheimer's disease. And people tend to be more anxious, too. And our brain, well, it's like here at St. Bridget's. There are all kinds of department and all kinds of people working here and a coordination. So our brain is the computer which uh, helps uh, us organize our day-to-day uh, -day, um, you know, life, helps us talk, helps us uh, remember, helps us um, pers um, on, in our analysis, thoughts, uh, movements, orientation, everything. So along the way when uh, those diseases affect the people, there's the first symptoms and it goes on. It, the, the, the brain deteriorates over the years. It's not like you wake up one day and you have Alzheimer's. It's slower than that. So these are the two phenomena that Dr. Uh, the, uh, Dr. Alzheimer's discovered in his microscope. Um, Plexinin, uh, this, those plaques are amyloid, amyloid uh, proteins that accumulate between the brain cells and it seems that this process distracts the brain cells over the years and the other phenomenon that he discovered was those um, in Alzheimer's. It's slower than that. So these are the two phenomena that Dr. Uh, the, uh, Dr. Alzheimer's discovered in his microscope. Um, plexinin, uh, this, those plaques are amyloid, amyloid uh, proteins that accumulate between the brain cells. And it seems that this process distracts the brain cells over the years. And the other phenomenon that he discovered was those, uh, the core of the brain cells. Um, neurofibrillary degeneration. <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> it's, it's hard for me. It's, those words are really hard. So there's another phenomenon that he discovered in his uh, microscope. So what happens, the evolution starts about where the memory center is uh, and it spreads throughout the brain so it affects the other departments of the brain and actually uh, deteriorates the, auto the autonomy, uh, you know, the independence of, of the person. This is about for Alzheimer's, this is about the evolution over the years. We don't know the causes yet. Uh, we don't know if those two phenomena are the product of Alzheimer's or the result. We don't know that yet. We have some kind of uh, different risk factors, but we don't, we didn't have point anything uh, that would, you know, tell us that's the problem that we, that is uh, the starter of uh, the diseases. We don't know yet, but and the length <coughs> grows from two years to twenty years. Uh, time lapse. Uh, so uh, it's about. Uh, an average from 10 or 12 years for for many people. So it's not a process that is uh, overnight. <clears throat> and even when, if I develop some symptoms in 20 years, it's, it's starting right now in my brain, you know. It starts way before first warning signs or first symptoms that we have. So people, when they have symptoms, they know, you know, the brain understands. They recognize. They, w they won't talk about it. Not so much. 
but some do. Okay, so it's reactions or, uh, like I said, emotions linked to the losses that people feel. Okay, and we'll talk about first warning signs. Uh, but that tends to, you know, uh, fade because people, especially with Alzheimer's which is a memory problem, well, they forget they have a memory problem, okay? It's, it's as simple as that. It's particular, but it's that phenomenon goes on. So we talk about three stages, an early stage, a middle stage, and uh, a severe stage. Uh, and people lose autonomy. People lose independence. At first, it's like making budget, making grocery, uh, uh, occupy uh, the day, occupy their their uh, their life, and further we go. They, it, it affects people in their own, you know, body. You know, like to uh, clothe or bathe or uh, go to the bathroom, those kind of things. Yes. <laughs> it depends, because I will talk about two forms of Alzheimer's. The one that appears when we are eight, and the one who appears when we are not aged, when we are younger than 65 years old. There's genetics uh, involved. So people are younger, and the disease develops faster. It goes faster. But it's about 5 to 7 percent of people who have the familiar type or the genetic type of Alzheimer's. So those people are kind of more, much younger. Uh, we see them often in... Yeah, like cancer if you want to. It's a more aggressive. Yes? Which type of memory loss we should have to consider to start Alzheimer's? Because, for example, me, several times I, I forget something in my daily life. I just started to think, okay, I, I'm sick or, or what? But I know there are some certain parts of uh, loss that we should have to be considered that, okay, this, this kind of uh, serious uh, sickness. Well, the brain, you know, yeah. The way it functions, you're going to remember what's important, okay? If you do remember what's important, how to make uh, your lunch, you know, how to bake, how to dress, how to, that's how to work, how to study, okay? You know that, you don't forget that. If you forget things that uh, are not important, like mining, you know, you won't need that in two years. Your brain says, "What? who cares? So that kind of information you forget and it's okay because we would be like, <laughs> we had a, we, we will, yeah, develop our brain like that size, okay. Yes? I was just gonna say, if you genuinely ever think you have a memory issue or anyone, having standardized testing with a neuropsychologist or professional is the best. Yeah. It is not. Of course. There's other things that will affect us in our intention, our concentration. And if I'm a person who is in the moon all the time, it won't go better if I don't uh, use some, you know, iPhones or agendas or, you know. Uh, like if I don't have any sense of orientation, uh, I won't, I won't, it won't, uh, won't appear uh, when I'm fif uh, 55 or 65 years old. I've never had it, so. You can't lose what you never had. But we'll talk about first signs and, and how, how we get a diagnosis, okay. okay? 
we'll, uh, we'll see that. So what happens is anosognosia, that's the term for forgetting what, that we have a memory problem. And then when we accompany people here at St. Bridges, they're in a severe uh, phase of the disease. And sometimes, sometimes, people react to what's going on around them or what we do with them. So uh, this is what we see sometimes because people lose speeches, they lose words, to express emotions, to express feelings, to express needs. So they have, they have to use other means to tell someone or show someone to communicate something but when we don't when you don't have any speech or very little speech that's when uh, we have to adapt ourselves and we have to uh, try to understand that person who has needs or emotions or a message to tell us so basic needs we all have physical uh, needs or f physiological needs, um, esteem, safety, love, you know, uh, closeness, uh, restoring people in their memories, what they did with their lives, what is the sense or the meaning of the existence of life. Sometimes it's a real need. That was uh, basically psychologists in the United States, humanists like Abraham Maslow, who told us that we have those needs and those needs don't disappear with any kind of uh, disease or dementia. They always stay there. Okay. <clears throat> and those needs, well, they could be in the present time. But people living with Alzheimer's, they they lose their memory, but not randomly, okay? They will lose it from short term to long term. It's like reading a book beginning, beginning from the end of the book and reading it until the beginning, like that. So this is the history of the person and the memory remembers who they were, uh, what they did, what they were able to do, how many kids, but okay, kids, they disappear, they talk about their parents, they, they talk about where they lived, and they want to go home. Yeah. yeah, I'm not, where's, I'm not, it's not my home here. I want to go home, okay, yep. Actually, I have a that situation. Yeah. Living in her apartment, but she says, where am I? I'm not home here. I want to go back home. And when we ask her, where's your home? Well, my home? My real home? She doesn't recognize it. Even her furniture, even her children. She doesn't recognize it. So for her, her home is her parents' home. Yeah. And when she sees herself on the picture with her husband who passed away many years ago, she doesn't even recognize herself and her husband, and she said, that's daddy. So it's backwards. Yeah. Backwards. You're backwards and we're not able to put a name on, no, that's my father, no. Okay. And when her sons and daughter comes over, who are you? Well, I'm your son. My no. son, no. You're not my son, so it's like... It's hard. It's hard for the family. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. One one tip is to go uh, investigate or asking. Oh, where did you live? What was it like? Did you have any brothers or sisters? What What did your dad do for a living? Okay. You uh, notice I use past tense. So I'm, I'm, I'm staying in 2019, but you know, I'll have a communication and interest myself and enter your world 
and not confronting you by saying, you know, no, 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 this is your home, okay? You stay here. Because people will react. That's where people react when they're, uh, we don't believe in them, okay? On, or when we uh, take them back in our world in 2019. That's completely, you know, it's lost for that moment. Argue we never argue with them <laughs> unless it's unsafe yeah, yeah. okay yeah. yeah but if you keep somebody in a place where you do not call home they can tell you I want to go home I know they're sick but how do you uh, I'm not small task with all this stuff so I don't know it's like it's not so thank you yeah. I have a communication. I'll have, I'm, you know, I can relate it to an emotion. Okay, I can say, you know, I hear you. You don't feel at home here. Okay, it's empathy, which is, can I put myself in her shoes? Okay. What if it what if it was me? Okay. So, okay, I hear you. You're not you don't feel safe here or you don't recognize your environment. That's true. So I validate. And then I go, well, tell me about your your home. Uh, let me if you want to, let me, you know, enter your world. Talk talk to me about it. And that tends to you know, soften the, the emotion, the intensity of the need. And the need behind that I hear is safety. And safety is talking about our souvenir. What made us safe or not. Because sometimes people don't, they, they didn't have a quite a story, good life story. So sometimes it's hard. There's emotion, there's souvenirs, there's a need for needs. We kind of validate that. By validation, we don't talk about the disease itself. Never. 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 Okay. Not, not in the severe stage. Because people forget, you know, they forget they, they have any kind of problem. The rationality is not there. Not, not the rationality. It's different. Without the disease, which is a kindness and its source, but at the same time, how do you recover? Yeah. We're gonna go further on, but just to tell you that the other than the disease, there are other factors that can tell or or affect us, all of us, in a day-to-day -day form. You know, weather. Uh, bad sleep, broken leg, uh, arthritis, <laughs> you know, suffering, psychological suffering, loneliness. Uh, I had a fight with another resident. Those kind of things. Uh, everything, lighting, uh, cold, heat, uh, noise. That's why we have uh, birds and, and fishes. It calms down. It's, it's environment. But the most important thing is who surround, surrounds us. Okay, les humains, humans. And how do, we, do they approach us? How do they talk to us? If you smile at somebody, there's no, you know, there's more chance that you have a, con uh, a level of confidence than if you go that you, you know, I have some influence. Uh, Michelin and uh, We're Mo. We're talking Mo. about emotions. Yep. I work at the day center. Yep. And many times the elder men come up, you want to go out with me? <laughs> men are in the 80s. Yeah. And I was about 40. 
Uh, How do, what do you say? I don't know. I, 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 that, <laughs> I said yes, but I, I said, meant no. <laughs> oh, you said yes. I was afraid to hurt their feelings. Yeah. I didn't know what to do. I was scared for my bosses also that if I hurt their feelings, that they would approach me. Yeah. I didn't know how to handle it. Okay. <laughs> it still goes on, yeah? it still needs physical needs or love, loving needs, so, okay, I hear you like woman, that's a question, he would say, yes, I do like, how did you meet your, when you were young, did you go at dances, did you, oh, but I hear that you like women, it's, it's human, it's not because I'm 80 years old that I don't have any need, okay? And if I think I'm 20 years old, well, and you're looking good, <laughs> why not? You want to go out with me? So I see you like women. Did you, uh, how did you meet your wife? Oh. Oh yeah, I had a wife. <laughs> I did what that's how I did that once it worked perfectly. Yeah. Often distract like distraction. Well, it's not kind of distraction because it's really, you know, he likes women, he likes women. That's right. And he had, he was young and he flirted and he charmed and well why don't you talk to me? Why don't you, I will listen to you. What's your story? And it's very important. I see the situation that you're trying to explain. Yeah. We, we do a little bit of empathy. But there are some times that, for example, I have uh, some certain uh, stage of dementia. And you are a person who, who is there to help me, to instruct me to do something. How do you trust the thing that I'm telling you? You say to me, okay, uh, if you are able to do or write something for me, and I say yes, but uh, in fact I'm not able to do this thing. How in communication wise, because we base our communication on what the person is saying. But when we have somebody like this, how we trust the thing that is telling us? That's the most difficult part. This person, because I, I have I've been involved with this. Uh, Do you have an example? Yeah, I I met a person, uh, an elder person, uh, who was uh, I had who I had to do, teach him to to do some tasks. Okay. But when we start communication, I, I understand that every question that I asked him, uh, he answered me, but the answer is doesn't have any base, you know? And I, I was confused, how can I react with that person or how can I go further? Okay. You know, it makes it harder and harder. Yeah. Because communication is double-sided. Of course, because people lose speeches. Yeah, yeah. And, and then they don't really know what you're telling them or uh, uh, demanding them. So you have to, uh, two factors. The first thing, is someone uh, where in what stage that person is okay what is she able to do like uh, like this morning do i have to just like pull you that way or do i have to okay more yeah you can also give one message at a time and validate do you understand okay did you understand what I saw, what I said, okay? Is it clear for you? And she will say yes or no. So we can ask yes or no questions that will help us to, you know, see where we're going. Is the task I'm asking is too difficult? Results don't matter anymore. Here, you know, people are just living. They are involved what they're able to do, but we don't ask them tasks that they can't do anymore, okay? To, um, because it could be stressful yeah. for them. Yeah. So you have to judge. Yeah, of course. 
and take experience and know that person and the better you know the person the better you will kind of uh, care for that person and yet it's true you know we have speech but we don't communicate that much with speech we communicate with our body language you know um, our eyes our movements our mimics our body posture touch <laughs> I'm really sorry I can't just stand here it's not my style are you okay okay uh, so there's the important and the tone of voice we use will make a difference if we're calm if we uh, level with that person eye to eye we'll make a contact better if I go like that Hey, you there? <laughs> you know, got to approach him. Oh, how are you, Danny? Very good. Hi, my name is Hugo. I'm here to uh, visit you today. All right. Are you fine with that? Yeah, totally. Good. So, where do you come from? Well, I, I come from uh, Korea. Korea? Yeah. Oh, really interesting. So, and go on and go on. Okay, and that person, which is alone most of the time, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, we enter his world, and he's no longer no alone. Okay, and the effect of this this interaction, this communication, will last long for the day. I'm pretty sure, because he's been stimulated. Okay. That's, that's the key to uh, care for people living with Asana. Maybe he's not... So I, I validate. Do you want me to sit here? Do you want me to enter your world? Because you and I, sometimes we don't want to speak to anybody. We just want to, you know, be quiet. And there's the bubble, you know. Can I touch you? Can I be close to you? You will see, maybe even if he doesn't speak, he'll make maybe a movement or like, no, no, don't, don't, you know. Okay, so I, I observe and I validate and I can't talk, you know. Even if that person doesn't, doesn't want to talk or doesn't, doesn't, isn't able to talk, I, I can't, okay, it's my tone of voice. And I'll have a communication, and he won't be alone. Oh, yes, I forgot. <laughs> I have a little experimentation for you. We're going to try to put ourselves in a position where we have a neurological disorder. Okay? It's not a cognitive test. Don't worry. <laughs> Can you help me, Amy? Here you go. Two of each. I have a question. I have an answer. <laughs> Does it affect schizophrenia, bipolar disease? Does it work in that also? Or is that completely different? Or does it if a person has the schizophrenia, paranoia, well, it will coexist. <laughs> yeah, but people don't develop necessarily psychiatric diseases. This is neurological. I didn't read that part of the lesson. <laughs> Everybody has a pen or a pencil? Yeah. Good. So what you do at... Yeah, thank you. I'll borrow a pen.
Okay. First of all, you're gonna put your pen or your pencil between the two lines, anywhere in the form, between the two lines. Yeah, like that, like that. And you're gonna draw a, a line between the two lines and follow like a car you draw a line all the way around yeah between the the two lines without touching the two lines between the two lines yeah we have enough view inside the car ah the pants that's it great good Yep. How did it go? Went well. Any feelings? Oh yeah. No feelings. No. Okay. Put that away. Take the other sheet. Uncertain. I was uncertain I could do it. You were. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna give you something, uh, a task. It's the same task, but I'm gonna give you one of these each. That's a mirror. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you're gonna place your mirror and up, okay? Up your sheet. You don't have to see the, the whole thing, the whole sheet, but you have to do the same thing only by looking in the mirror. I, re I recall to you that this is not a test to see if you have the Alzheimer's <laughs> disease. There's no pass or fail. No. <laughs> it's just to have an impact on what, what goes on. Okay? <laughs> yeah. There you go. Oh, you wanted to help me. Here. Here. Thank you. So when you're ready, you can place your sheet on something steady. You can have the green one. Here you go. Sorry. Here you go. So really up. No. Really up, 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 up. Up in the air, yep. And what are we supposed to do? Same thing. Take the other one. Oh, we have the other one? Yeah. Here you go. Just a two pair. Here you go. And go the mirror. Go just by looking in the mirror. I see you guys. I, I'm surveilling you. It's annoying. Accident. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> son, son, somebody's reacting. <laughs> That's the goal. I'm going to lose my driving license. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna be committed. <laughs> oh my god, no, no. I quit.
<laughs> How did that go? Not very well. Not, not, not as good. What did you feel? I was frustrated. Control loss. Patient. Frustration. Frustration. I was kind of confused. Confused. Nervous. Lost of balance. Empathy is the Alzheimer's person. Yeah, I can better empathy. In the you can relate to what yeah, yeah. seems simple becomes harder, yeah, yeah. and emotions come with the fact that I I used to be able to, and I'm not able to use all of my brain to remember, to close, to walk sometimes, to you know analyze resolve problems so yeah maybe it's that feel, those feelings and we're all different okay we don't we don't did the task the same way and we didn't react the same way because we all have uh, uh, an history a personality so that's important too nobody is affected quite the same by any kind of disease. Okay. I wanted to show you that because that's what happens in the late stage of Alzheimer's. This is the brain, a normal brain, and you have, you know, you see the holes there. Also, I I told you that we uh, would would see a. Uh, risk factors I don't have it in English so I put it I, I put it in French some things we don't control like age the gender because uh, women are more affected than men okay why I don't, we don't know why yet and some genetics in, in the disease women live longer And others we control. All the uh, the uh, the way of life, the way we live. So if we move, if we do cognitive uh, exercises, if we socialize, okay, uh, we're less at risk. Other uh, vascular related uh, diseases are factors of risk: diabetes and um, concussion, brain concussions. You know, like. Hockey players, football players, they develop uh, diseases much, much more than, than normal people do. And younger, all kinds of trouble. Yeah, probably another factor. My, my mom suffered from uh, Alzheimer's. Yeah. But she developed it when she was in her reading things. So it's the late form. Yeah, the late form. Yeah. Okay, it was more apparent. Yeah. Because your father compensated. Yeah. Maybe. So when he passed away, yeah. well, you saw your mother. Well, she couldn't live alone anymore, or she couldn't do she well. Uh, For a couple of years, she was able to. Live yeah. Without. Uh, without help okay and uh, grieving and all that yeah but it develops uh, more slowly uh, when uh, they're old because uh, yep she'll turn 97 next week uh, she's 97 yeah she'll turn 97 next, okay. next week and i mean she still she's not lost what she lost is her short-term memory yeah because she still talks with us on the phone and uh, I mean she and when we take her for a ride for instance she recognizes where in the home where she is her house and things like that. I hope we don't want uh, we don't wish our parents die. I hope she'll die before she gets to the next phase. Yeah. Because yeah. she still can talk to with us. She still have emotion and she express her needs. Yeah. 
She can speak. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So this is our warning signs. Okay, short-term memory losses. Okay. People have long-term mem uh, memory; they don't lose it uh, at the at the beginning of the first symptoms. Uh, difficulty uh, execu executing familiar task. Okay. Uh, recipe, for example, that we always did, and suddenly we have difficulty. Uh, making se sequences or, uh, you know, respecting the, the plan, our plan. Uh, other um, speech, okay, uh, inverse, uh, inversing uh, words or having trouble finding words. Uh, disorientation, like I said before, losing our car in the parking lot or losing our way. In familiar places, um, losing object or putting objects in usual in unusual places like my glasses and the and the fridge, okay. And loss of initiative, too, which can be a first uh, sign. And also, our judgment will uh, will uh, suffer a little bit. How do we diagnose? It's not simple. We have some tests, but not that one. It's not a cognitive test, but we have some. Doctor will, will pass some uh, tests to a person who shows signs, but that's not enough. It's just like a warning that something goes on. We don't know what exactly, and we have to eliminate it. Some other related disease or pathology that could present some symptoms, similar symptoms, <clears throat> like uh, tumors or cancers, uh, like lung thyroid, which is in English, a what? Thyroid. Thyroid? Thyroid gland. Thyroid. Thyroid. It's bizarre. <laughs> it's more bizarre than Mo. <laughs> thyroid. Thyroid. Cancer, like I said that, or uh, medi uh, medication, bad in, uh, bad interactions between medic uh, between medication, uh, vitamins, or some infections too. And we, uh, doctor, it's a, a clinical process, so we have manual. We have the DSM five that says we have to have two out of five symptoms to uh, continue uh, the process of diagnosis which is memory, language, uh, movements, coordination, like driving a car, okay? Um, executive functions. Oh, that's good. Uh, executive functions with judgment, self-control, or a uh, matter of Social behaviors, okay, we can we can lose and uh, gnosis, recognizing faces, recognizing places, um, recognizes what happens, what's happening in my body or my health. Okay, that's nausea. Further on, we say the symptoms we are witnessing has some impact on my day-to-day -day life, okay? And it wasn't like that before, okay? I, these symptoms are new to me, and they appeared gradually. Yeah, there's a notion of evolution in that, okay? And we can complete with some tests, uh, uh, blood tests, imageries, and even sometimes genetic testing to just put the pieces of the puzzle so we have a, a, a portrait. Yeah. It, it's not 100% sure, okay? It's always, the diagnosis is always more likely to be, and 
depending on the first warning signs, the first symptoms, we can say, oh, it's Alzheimer type, or it's vascular, or it's uh, frontotemporal, or it's bodily, uh, bodily uh, disease. Great. So, so that was the technical part that I wanted to show you that I didn't have in English. So let's continue in. It's okay with communication? I'm good. Okay, I'm in the beginning. Okay. This. Okay. There's something else, okay? It's not just the memory, but psychologically, okay? If people go backwards, okay? Psychologists told us how we develop as humans, okay? Like Eric Erickson, maybe you know him. It's the first who attempted to uh, tell us what we needed to do, our task and our luggage of life, okay? And it's all psychological. So first thing we have to do is learn confidence. Learn that my mother will come back because she can't take care of me 24 hours, 7 days a week. She has to go rest. But the baby has to learn that confidence that my mother will come back to feed me and give me love and all of that. Okay. Who has little children? Yeah? What do... Uh, they do, our little children. They test you. They test your limits. That's their job, you know. You, I'm sorry, but they test the limit to uh, to know where the bounds are, and to be able to go to school and respect laws, certain laws in school, and be able to communicate and relate to and be the kind of of child that you want, so you'll, you'll transmit your, your values, your way, your education to that children. And sometimes, well, uh, in, back in the good old times, children, they were more, you know, uh, parents were, were tough with their children. Tougher, okay? Severe, you know? Uh, but it's their, uh, you know, their task to test the limit and learn control. Adolescents, who has adolescents, teenagers? You were once teenagers. What did you do? <laughs> well, yeah, test. You do? My daughter is 15 and my son is 17. Okay, so they have to learn to be, to learn their, their own identity and cut the, the, the cord <laughs> from the mother and, or the father or both. Yeah, so you don't know anything I know. I will make some experiences. And knowing if you, even I, if I make some mistakes, if I'm annoying, you will love me as a mother, so you help me to be someone, okay? In some generations, they didn't have any teenage way, teenage period, okay? It was life, adult life. Like you go to work, uh, especially, wo especially women, they didn't have the chance to get, uh, you know, scholarship. Yeah, they had to, they had babies young. They got married young. And even then, the, the, the husband had to give permission if the, the woman wanted to work. Back in the good old days. And religion was present. Catholic religion and uh, pressure to have children, too. So we're not, we're, we're caring for people that are uh, 80 years old, uh, 85 years old, uh, and, and more. So they come from another generation. But everybody has to do that, <laughs> okay? Sometimes it's not possible. 
and we go on and we get older and we build uh, and we face yes do you have yeah, I just have something to add on because I've, I've been working at the peer support group at, at by Sage, Sage of St. Lawrence. Yeah. So I've been experiencing many uh, students, like young, young Liverpool who just recently started Sage or just about to finish Sage So I've been experiencing sometimes like how they had this, um, family issues, saying that they all, they always wanted something from their family members, so they would be, always be very, uh, say, na na naggy about it, so they would. They will try to demand to get, for example, uh, one of the of the thing that they have. Uh, the, one of the student has told me was that, oh, I told my fa my father that I wanted to buy. Uh, I wanted you to buy me video co uh, video console like uh, say a, a Nintendo 64, for example. And I was and he and he and I was like, I'm very not happy about about it. It was my birthday. What did you not get it for me? And I'm like, so. Uh, I, so basically, what I'm saying is that. It seems like uh, for teenagers, they're still trying to uh, wanting to ask their parents that what, 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 like, what they want to have, but at the end they don't uh, even uh, get it. You know? So, well, so I've, I've been uh, basically experiencing the many different. Uh, being yeah, childish. Yeah, being childish in a way. So okay. I, I get to I get to understand many different uh, students. Uh, of course. Like, yeah, feelings. As they can say. Of course, parents still have a role. Yeah. You know of loving, of caring, but they have limits. You have limits. You don't tell your children, well, you can go off and not tell me where you're going or take your, uh, take my car and uh, let's have a beer or a couple beers, let's smoke a joint and go. No, you don't tell them that. Time, okay? <laughs> Be, be on time, they can always say yes to your kids. It's like not, 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 there's no but your son maybe will test her on time, okay? Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't, you know, I went, you know, I lost kind of... Oh, yeah, 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 sure, 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 sure. But, you know, you will love him even if he does that. But you'll give him some consequences. Yeah. Because he's not independent yet. He wants to. But he needs her to get the car, get a uh, Nintendo or whatever. He, he, he's not independent yet. He's not an adult yet. He will be. I, I, could, I, I could understand the, the, the point of view because me, myself, I, I was there as well, always asking the, my mother and father saying, I want this, I want that. Why are you, you not letting me do what I want? Come on. No. Yeah. As, I, as I grew up as an, as an adult age, now I'm 24, so I can understand. Of course. So you're in the face of adults who have to face the world and have to work and... Uh yeah. True. Sorry? My frontal lobes are not fully developed yet. <laughs> 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 it's true. Experience, yeah. Elasticity. Uh, new connection. Okay? It's not... Experience. Experience is... Oh, you know that Eureka thing that you solve the problem and it went well and you say okay I know now and we learn all through our lives but when we get older well we tend to do the same things it's routine okay like you like when uh, when I'm come I'm coming home tonight first thing I will you know pajamas. undress and put my pajamas and my old sweater that I, my, my wife tells me to wash some <laughs> from time to time, but that, that sweater, I could live with that sweater, you know, I like that sweater, it's comfort. It's, so it's a key for, for people living with Alzheimer's to the routines, you know. And what they did, well, they did, they always did, and they solved problems and they survived. Even if they, um, they experienced some traumas when they were young, okay, sometimes it happens. Sometimes they revisit the memories yeah. the stage of life, like you're saying, that they're going back in their books. Yeah. They go back to childhood or they go back to teenagehood and they go back to a faith that they never really lived. Or they didn't realize a task there. Yeah. 
like uh, you know being a child and being imperfect or being a teenager and being imperfect and be you know they went from uh, babies to taking care of their brothers and sisters and and then working and then get married and then having children and then really a lot of people didn't do what they wanted to do and that's an impact too because one of the things that you said last earlier this week that i thought was interesting was that uh, given that women had lived a circumstance where they couldn't go to school and finish their education in some cases uh, later in life they want their knowledge to be valued and they want their opinion to be heard and there's nothing that's going to stop it now. <laughs> so they're going to be more firm about what they want to say and do. Of course. And that's uh, an affirmation which is part of the stage of life that they were not granted. It's almost political what you're getting into. History and more, culture. <laughs> more elderly people in politics. Of course. <laughs> well, I think you mentioned last earlier this week too that um, if a if a person had been not granted a happy childhood, yeah. it could return to moments that were difficult to them. Mm -hmm. And in living it, um, it's sometimes difficult to accompany them because it's highly emotional. They might be sitting there. If you mention their childhood, and it triggers an emotion or a feeling that they've had that they buried deep, but now at this stage in their life, it's coming up because they need to get past it. It can be uh, something very interesting and difficult and therapeutic for them for you to just listen. It's yeah. just listen and be comfortable with the emotions that they're going to get up. It could be crying, it could be telling you the, the security need. Sometimes it's just a, a memory if you're a, a gentleman interacting with another gentleman and he's been abused in his life. You couldn't possibly know that. But the fact that you're very tall freaks him out. Well, this could be something that's not, not at all your, your your problem or, your, or based on, on you and your personality, but it's something that they're living. So Is that what, what triggers also anger? It uh, could well it trigger could anger violence? just to protect yeah, themselves. Possibly, yeah. Yeah. To protect themselves. So they'll react, but they won't, they won't reach out to you unless they're... I mean, you're always going to validate when you sit with them. May I sit here and <laughs> yeah. talk with you? And, yeah, and like uh, Hugo was saying, some of the behaviors that you can mimic that will reassure and calm them is to talk to them at the same high level. Always take a seat to make yourself comfortable, wait, and then see if interaction is, is wanted by their facial expression and their nonverbal cues. And, uh, and if it isn't, that's just not the right day. Maybe another day will be a better day. And we're all that way too, like you would think. The weather's crummy outside, like it is today. We're not all feeling, you know, up and easy the same way that we would if it was uh, sunny. And and what I found also working in the day center, they tend to repeat the same stories. That means they don't feel quite heard if they if they keep bringing. Oh. They they want someone to validate and, and to ask about and for them to tell that story perhaps. So. Or it's really important. Yeah, it's very important. Okay, they're trying to get out of something that they're not able. There, to there's a bone okay. with a lot of meat, so they until they've heard. Of course, that's a factor. Or it, it's, it returns because it's something important or a big trauma, you know. Yeah, adaptation. Uh, the adaptation is is you know not necessarily uh, as speedy. Could it be loneliness? It is. Good. Good. So, so so this is what I was talking about stages of life psychologically what happens in, the, in uh, Alzheimer's disease well people go back so there's a task they didn't do there's a trauma there there's a message but people don't have any speech or little speech to express them so what we do is assist them trying to repair what they didn't do in their lives so as you said who are uh, older women who start to uh, swear <laughs> or making, uh, you know, gestures, okay? Maybe they don't want to be touched, okay? Or we have to adapt very much. What? So we validate. Can I sit 
with you, close to you. Can I touch you? So I see what what's going on in making a, a contact, a, a, a confidence contact with that person. You said mimicking their movements so was yep. particularly helpful. I thought that was very interesting because it's the person that you said, are you having a good day? Is that your example? Yeah. Are you having a good day? And they're like, oh, you're nodding. Well, yes. Yeah. Yes, I guess so. Instead of... Are you having a good day? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think That's the example that I did. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I, yeah. I'm having a wonderful time. What would, be, what would be the procedure? How would you remedy the situation if you were a caretaker? Or would you just leave them alone? Or well, I would. A professional, somebody with more experience? I would ask, well, yeah, ask some for someone with more experience. If it's hot, if the heat is hot, if, okay. if the heat is on, okay. okay? Because when we do that, when we take the chance to care for somebody and sit with them, we take the chance of pushing a button, you know? When I say, well, where do you come from? What did, you, what did your mother uh, did? And then she goes like, oh, my mother, and she reacts like that. Well, I pushed a button there. Yeah. Didn't go well with her, her mother. But what okay. do you do in that situation when she, she goes, oh, that mother of mine, I can't stand her. Where is she? We're going we're to, you know. <laughs> do you say, well... Uh, She's angry? Yeah. Are you angry at your mother? Uh, were you angry at your mother? Because maybe her mother doesn't live anymore. She's, she's uh, about 80 years old. Okay, Her mother, she's dead. Maybe. I suppose. If I'm 80, she'd have to be like 120. <laughs> 120. So you were angry at your, at your mother? Yeah. That's it. I wait. <laughs> I don't have to fill the banks. She does. I don't have to. I don't have to work that hard. Yeah. Okay? But I can validate. I see you're angry. So do I do I catch the message? I'm pretty sure the message I catch is emotion is angriness. Right? Okay, that. So do you want to talk to me about it? No. Are you thirsty? You are. We can't identify the person that can't necessarily even express what it is. I mean, many people are sometimes have aggressive behavior, but it's not doesn't come out that it's necessarily a conflict in their past. Or no, there's a need. They're just. A, they're just a, this is the tip in the uh, of the iceberg, okay? Well, I see that something doesn't work. I don't know what, okay? I've got to find it, okay? If I have some clues, okay? Maybe she, uh, are you sitting from, do you want to uh, walk with me? Physical need. I don't know. If she, she sits there for, uh, uh, she was there for uh, four hours sitting. I would be like, oh no, I gotta get up. But I can't express it. So, can, do you want to walk with me? Yeah? Okay. Maybe she's just stuck there. Okay? <laughs> I don't know. But I, physical needs or psychological, maybe she's alone. And she wants to, uh, you know, hey, I'm, the, I'm here. So maybe she'll, she'll scream. Someone who screams, I don't have any speech, or I make noise. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, hi, how are you? <laughs> cheerful like that was that was sort of my upbringing and so always my instinct when they bring up uh, sad things um, like my instinct is to change the subject to something more cheerful to try to cheer them up but I have to I've tried I've been trying to resist that 
like if a person is telling me uh, about people who have died in their lives or if they're expressing frustration, uh, like I'm so, it makes me so angry that I lost on my independence and I had to move here uh, and live in this awful place. And, and my instinct is always to say something like, oh, did you see the hockey game last night? <laughs> you know, like, just, but it's, uh, I, I'm kind of hard not to do that. Um, okay. Moving it to something more comfortable for me. For you. Would be for me. And, and actually, what they need is for me to sit with them in their negative mood. It's not, they don't want me to stop it. Or, I don't know, I don't know what they want. But, but I shouldn't just try to distract them. Well, if you want to go further, she's telling you she has confidence, I have confidence in you. I tell you, I hate it here. I lost all I had. So my feeling is, well, you're, you're sad. So, yes, you understand me. So, she's a great girl. She understands me. Okay, she doesn't try to uh, die, uh, make, make uh, the, the, you know, divertissement. Distraction. Distraction or uh, changing subject or no, no, you're okay here or don't be sad. You know, it's like when we have uh, something going on, a uh, rupture, you know, or exam, a group, a breakup, a breakup, a lot of pain. Who am I gonna uh, reach for? Some someone who hears my pain and doesn't really talk. We don't have to talk all the time. We can listen. Okay. So it's my pain, it's her pain, it's her grievousness or uh, you know losses. And it, well, if it was me, I I would be you know not that I don't like it here. Okay, I like it very much, but I don't want to hand here. I don't want to hand my life here. I want to be at home. And I don't want to lose what I can do now. Okay, I don't want to depend on others. But that's human. So you can just welcome the, those feelings, those needs, this kind of closeness, and you'll see. It's now, it's now there's no danger. There's no consequence for you. But there's a need there. There's always a need. And it's like a tip of an iceberg. The way of, of the behavior, the manner, okay? It's just the, the, the thing we see. It's about 10% of the iceberg. Beneath the iceberg, you know, it's the biggest part. And beneath the, the manner, uh, the, the, the way uh, of expressing the behavior, even if sometimes it's like volcanoes, well, there's a thought. There's uh, emotions, there's feelings, there's uh, needs there. That's the way we, we have to see it. So we validate a lot and we ask some yes or no questions. She can nodle, she doesn't speak, but she can nodle. Do you want me to, uh, to take care of you today? Or she it will be yes or no, but I'm fixed. I see you're angry. Oh, you want to uh, be with someone? Yes? Do you want me to uh, uh, sit with me? Or even if she's in a wheelchair or we'll have her? Yeah. Or should we uh, take a tour? Mm -hmm. A bus tour? <laughs> Use you, Mark. So this is what Naomi feel. It's a social worker from the uh, United States. I'm going to show you a little video of her in action. Well, she said we have uh, many levels of, of consciousness, of uh, awakeness. And when our feelings are ignored, well, they tend to gain power. But when they're validated, they can they tend to lose their intensity and if that feeling those emotions are are there for many 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 years well they don't they won't they won't uh, fade that that fast okay 
So what she tells us it's he has to you have to use empathy. Empathy is not sympathy. It's not confrontation. It's not insight-oriented therapy. It's, we don't want to, you know, not a, an inquiry, okay? You want to go there? I'm going with you. You don't want to go? I'm not, you know, asking something that I know that could start a fire, okay? Uh, patronizing, of course. We can't modify behaviors, okay? We can, like you said, uh, Mo, we can do some task and analyze whether if you're able to do that or not, okay? We will adjust from the time, okay, the length and the result. Are, tho are those res results important or not important at all, okay? That will... Uh, Diversion, I don't really do diversion, but I know that it's common to do that. When we do that, it will work, okay, for a short period of time, okay? Uh, and repetitions, okay? Someone who repeats a lot and we tend to change subjects, you know? Maybe, I don't know if you were... Uh, uh, accompanying the, that person a long time uh, for a long period of time or no? Okay, two years. And did she repeat often what you told us? Okay, that's an effect. So when we do that, okay, work. A hockey game last night. Good. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. Okay, it's like a uh, yeah. So what's, what's the uh, what's the approach with somebody? Because sometimes we we try to acknowledge the, what the person said, but sometimes people just just come back to the same thing over and over and over again. So uh, what, what can your approach be in that case? Because sometimes it, it, it becomes a problem for that person because they can't go past it. So if you're visiting somebody and they're telling you, oh, I hate it here, I hate it here, I hate it here, and, it, and even if you've acknowledged it, you've talked it over with them, is there any, what, what Of course, you we could? can tend to... Uh, basically, I was going to add, like, how you could uh, work on it just to continue to uh, accept it, because if they're not going to really uh, change their way of thinking, since generally when they're starting to grow older, they don't really have the... The, the, the capability to change their mind to say something more uh, positive because now they're lonely, they don't have people to be with, they're always thinking so um, like isolated and it's all like black, black meaning like so like that happy moment. They want to go back to the way they wanted it to be in the past, so they're always going to. Uh, say, uh, I want, I, I don't, I don't like this place. Why, why, why am I in this place? I sh I'm, 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 I'm sure I can live, I can live on my own. I sh I'm, uh, I'm, cap I'm capable of it. So you can't really do any much about it. Just to, uh, to be empathy. So you have to just continue to listen to them. Say, okay, yes, I understand. I, I know you, you're going through a hard time. Eventually, at one point, you're just going to, uh, you be like, oh, okay, finally, there's someone that, that's actually really. Uh, there to listen to my story and, and, and I'll feel better about it. There's only way to go at, uh, from, from my experience with uh, many different old people I've been talking to. If I wanted to go further, that's good, okay? But, you know, when people are stuck, okay, and I could sack. Which happens. Okay, this is the situation I hear that you're not feeling good here. Est-ce que c'est déjà arrivé? I'm going to say it in French, okay? Est-ce que c'est déjà arrivé dans votre vie que vous avez vécu une situation similaire? Did it happen in your life once that you were stuck in one place? Okay? I'm going to try to find, I'm going to help 
her find solutions. Okay. Uh, okay. Maybe, maybe it's yes. I hope it's yes. I try to relate it with one situation, a similarity. She, she survived once. She can survive twice, okay? So I validate the emotion, okay? I hear that, okay? Did that happen to you in your life when you were like in a, in a dead end yeah. like that? What did you do? For yourself, okay? She used to resolve problems, okay? So she can, that person can again try and we can help you. Can I help you? What, what can, what, what did you do to help you? What did you do? Of speech, of course, that's the example. But a person who's in more advanced, uh, Question anymore, and, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's like, as you said, like a broken disc, and, and you try to listen, but you know. Why? There are people that don't say, I don't like it here. No. They simply say, I don't live here. They're in the fantasy world. I mean, uh, for instance, uh, uh, that, uh, that, that person will say, uh, Oh, I had breakfast with my father this morning at my parents' house. and. Uh, my parents are dead. Uh, that's yeah, what, that's what I said, okay. You used to take breakfast with your parents when you were, when you were young. So I restore that person in the past. Yeah, but what do you tell her when she says, I don't live here? I mean, don't Where did you used you to live? Where did you lose to live? Tell about the past, that's all. Where did you lose to, uh, where did you used to live? That could be something. Yeah, but as you said, she'll, uh, next time we see her, she'll... Uh, Maybe, but there's no consequences. No consequences at all. It's Alzheimer's. We, don't, we can't control that. We can't control what it does to the brain. What we can do is reduce the stressness of telling that person, no, you live here now. Your parents are dead. S oh, no. Things like that. No, I, you know, we hear sometimes that. So, and it's the whole fashion way was to, you know, it's right here, right now. You don't live in the past anymore. So everybody tend to cry a lot because I'm announcing a death. And I'm trying to m modificate the, the behavior, which is the wrong way to do it. If it's, if it's something that's repeated, it's something important, okay? It's if it's an emotion or a need and what the person needs. What can I help her re rebuild, refine some security, some love, some understanding, some relation relationship, even if that person tells me, well, you know, I, I don't live here. Where did you used to live? Tell me, where are you from? Oh, you're from Montreal. I'm from Montreal, too. So we get a, a, a link. Well, if, if you're working with this population, it's really good to explore music and memory, because music is the best to work. Yeah. be very cognitively calming for people, and they can develop playlists that are very unique to them. So if they become agitated, it's something that you can help. They'll help shift in a very natural way. It takes out communication, it takes out the communication, and the training is free for music and memory. Kind of yes. I've seen, I've seen this happen. This was this I have, have it a video, summer. I will show you. And he was in a wheelchair, and like they, they rolled him off, like, you know, it's finished for him. And I, somebody uh, taped the music from Bon Jovi. He got up and started dancing. <laughs> Yeah. Great. Magic. So using music, touching, center yourself. Center yourself. Okay? Maybe you won't be able to um, decode, okay? Or, or understand the need or the emotion, but you can try, you know? I, I see you're angry. Are you angry? No? Okay. Are you sad? Maybe. <laughs> 
Tell me about your home. Tell me about your parents. Where did you live? Those kind of things. If the people, if the person speaks, if the person doesn't speak, well, use nonverbal language to help her understand that you're there with your your mirror like that you know a politicians and someone who's trying to uh, sell you something will go this is the best product you know not this is the best product <laughs> yeah yeah for, for sure and use past tense and rephrase The message, rephrase it so you can go further. Oh, you did. Of course, I did. Okay. Yes. Well, just because uh, I was already Christine for for years, I I understand what you were talking about. If someone said I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. I understand that you try to rephrase and then say, okay, you angry about something, so you go there. You know, what, what, Personally, yeah, of course, <laughs> hundred miles an hour. <laughs> but you have to be able. You've got to quite a lines. How far do you go there? Because it can be really yeah, very long. Oui, ça peut être long. It's là, c'est tes attentes à toi. Pardon? See, it's your your level of what you want expectations. Okay. It's your expectation. It's your. It's my filters. Where do I want to go? But uh, you have time. We're all vol volunteer. I have one hour, two hour. That person. Okay. Good. Take some patience, of course. <laughs> we always have an uh, example in our mind. And, yeah. Uh, when I was talking about that uh, a few minutes ago, we have an old friend uh, who is uh, in that situation. She's. She lives like in a fantasy world, but she was in a choir before, and she likes music a lot. So the only way my wife and I we had to, I say, to communicate with her is when she's in that kind of, uh, let's say, other world. We talk uh, with her about music, about, and then she communicates with us. So she, it's like she she comes back in the real world. Yeah. Touches something in her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have some clients for friendly visits who don't communicate at all at this stage, but when they hear music, mm -hmm. uh, it just wakes them up and it helps them move, it helps them feel less pain, it has a big reaction on their, their physical and psychological state. So sometimes your companionship is just to listen to music with them, just an enjoyable activity. Enjoy music. I have two little videos. I will show you exactly what I mean. First one is validation. The person is very late stage, okay? She doesn't speak anymore. And you'll see Naomi Field, the one who developed this validation therapy or validation uh, uh, way of being with people living with Alzheimer's. And the second one is mem music and memory. Who we'll talked about that? Uh, you. You did. It's alive inside. They did that in the uh, States too. <clears throat> so, just to uh, wrap things up. When people are very old and deteriorated and no one enters their world and they're just sitting there, they will withdraw inward more and more. And their desperate need for, for connection is all now inside. And if a person is all alone, even if they're very, very deteriorated, there's a longing for this kind of closeness. Mr. Hello? You want me to sit? Gladys Wilson is a wonderful example of a person who is in the space of repetitive motion, where people use movements, repetitive movements, because they don't have any more speech or very little speech, but they have human needs that need to be expressed. Crying. Crying. 
tear right here in your face. You have a little pain, you don't want me to touch you. You're very sad. Can you see me? Is it scary? Are you afraid? And if this person sits with their eyes closed, rocking back and forth, and maybe there's a tear coming down, there's a need there. There's a little tear that's coming up. Do you feel it? you feel a little tear? If you gently use touch, and I touched Gladys Wilson for the fingertips right here on the cheek, is where the mother usually touches a child. If you touch an infant there, it looks up. And every cell remembers where it was touched by the mother. And often that person knows, even if they can't say a word at that moment, they won't talk, but, or they don't want to talk. But they, there's, there's a communication. And that person is no longer alone. Can you let me in a little bit? You think? Just a little? You think I could be with you and Jesus for a minute? Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. I use music. Because when speech is gone, Music, especially with Gladys Wilson, was religious music, but there's emotion tied to it and safety tied to it. So I used her old church song. Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. What I did was, when she moved, I moved with her. And when I was singing, because she didn't sing with me, so I matched the intensity of my voice to the intensity of her movement. And pretty soon, for a split second, we became one person. Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. So at one point, when she got very quiet and very peaceful, and my voice became very quiet as hers and very peaceful and my breathing slowed to her breathing. She pulled me to her and I moved with her. And I, for her at that moment, I believe I was a symbol of, of her mom. Can you open your eyes now? Do you see me? Feel safe and warm? In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hand. He's got the whole world in his hand. He's got the whole world in his hand. He's got the mothers and the fathers. He's got doesn't happen every time. The person will not always look their, open their eyes and look at you. But if you keep trying and you send, keep centering yourself and uh, really look at that person and really mirror their movements, maybe not this time, but the next time you come, you'll have a communication. You feel safe? You feel safe? Yeah. With Jesus? Yeah. And me? The, the state of, I just feel like it's important to mention that the state that this client is in in the home is not quite the same state you will ever have them within their own home if you're doing friendly visits. They wouldn't be at this stage of their life. They would be possibly here at St. Bridget's home. 
uh, depends uh, what comfort level you have with interacting with seniors. Because for uh, friendly visits, it won't be at this stage. But for safe bridges, they may well be. We have about five more minutes to go. I have one resident that really opened her eyes, she didn't respond. As much as I tried, I for two years. No matter what I tried, the thought wouldn't work, nothing worked. But when we got introduced to the iPods, and the family told me the things that she liked, it was amazing once we put the iPod on her. She started shaking her feet. She started moving her, her head. Her son was just amazed. Okay, can we stop? Because now I'm getting all off. <laughs> I'm saying how I'm over that.
Prison that brand new free ow. So in some sense, Henry is restored to himself. He has uh, uh, remembered uh, who he is and uh, he's, he's reacquired his, his identity for a while through the power of music. What, what does music do? <coughs> it gives you a feeling of love. You man, but right now the world needs to come into it. You got beautiful music in. Beautiful love, lovely. And there are a few bands of love, dream. The Lord came to me, being a holy, I'm a holy man. So he gave me this sound. So he said, I meet you. And he said, Rosalie, won't you love me? Won't you leave me? With this beautiful new technology, you're going to have all the music which is significant for you and something as big as a matchbox or, or whatever. And I think this, this, this may be very, very important in uh, helping to animate, organize, uh, and uh, bring a sense of identity back to people who are, who are out of it. Otherwise, music will bring them back into it into their own personhood, their own memories, their own autobiographies. That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.